Hey, I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors of the Lincoln County Podcast. Hozak Plumbing, Simply Worth, Medical Weight Loss, Town and Country Insurance, The Guild, and Boyer Academy. Thank you guys for your sponsorship and thank you for making the Lincoln County Podcast possible. Just want to say thank you to everyone at Boyer Academy. Without the success of Boyer Academy and all the families there, I wouldn't have met all these wonderful people in and around Lincoln County that have came on the Lincoln County podcast. So without you guys, none of this would really be possible. Having this has been a dream come true to sit down and talk to so many business owners and share my experiences at Boyer Academy, their experiences and, and successes with their business with everyone in and around our local area. Welcome to the next episode of the Lincoln County Podcast. As always, I'm really excited to sit down and chat with my guest today. Um, and today's a special day. I have my daughter, Jocelyn, co-hosting with me today. We're having fun with something while uh, summer break's going on. So as always, like, share, subscribe, support our sponsors. Without our sponsors, we do not have the Lincoln County Podcast. So I'm going to dive right in today. I'm going to turn it over to my guest, introduce himself, tell us a little bit about what he does, and we're going to go from there. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Ready good, to be good. here. Yeah. So uh, my name is Adam Stanick. I am uh, residing in Hawk Point, Missouri. I'm the fire chief, newly appointed fire chief out there. Congrats. Um, thank you very much. Of the Hawk Point um, Fire Department, we're a 100% volunteer department. So made up of about, we fluctuate 15 to 20 guys just due to the fact that we are volunteer. We've got individuals on the department that are giving up their time and just giving back to the community. So yeah. outside of that, full-time job, work for a uh, auction company called JJ Kane, big national company. We sell off um, power line equipment, bigger equipment, oh, vehicles, okay. yeah. that kind of stuff. And uh, serve on a couple boards, serve on the 911 board um, here in Lincoln County. Um, born and raised in Lincoln County. I was born and raised in Hawk Point, Missouri. So I've been there, I'm 36 years old. Went been away there to college for a while. I've been around for a while, so. It was funny, we, uh, for whatever holiday week it was, first responder, whatever, we, a bunch of people donated to the dispatchers. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, that's one of the first times that I've, was since doing this, went in somewhere to where they're not like, oh, you have Boyer Academy, oh, you have Boyer Painting. They're like, oh, we listen to the podcast. I was like, no way. It was like the first time I got, yeah, about a week after that, someone else did the same thing. They're like, oh, you're the guy with the podcast. But that was the first time people, they were like, oh, yeah, we listen. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Well, this is from the podcast. There you go. Because I, yeah, well, we were donating. So I didn't really, I was like, it's just from Boyers. Like, I, you know, we do a few things, but um, they were really nice up there. They were, that's awesome that you volunteer on the board because that's a pretty, yeah, yeah, without that, that's, that's a big deal for us. That's an elected position. Yeah. So um, I got elected to that, serve on that one for four years. Nice. So I'm going Congrats. on another year with that. Um, and I mean, that's in the infancy. So I mean, that's where everything starts when we talk emergency services in this county. For sure. <clears throat> that 911 call comes in to the, the dispatchers there. They send it out to the fire departments, um, ambulance. You know, you had Ray on. So that's yep. our ambulance side of it. Police, any of the one of the districts around. And then, I mean, we're in the middle of building the building up there. Really? It's, yeah, it's it's gonna it's getting getting crazy right now. That's We've awesome. Got a new building going up by the sheriff's office for for the dispatch facility. Oh yes, yes, yes. So that one will be there. <clears throat> Not for the fire department. We're we're maintaining. Well, that's what I was, we got. I was like, Wait, where's the building going at out there? Yeah. I was like, no, 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 you're no, good. No new building for us. Because I was just out there at uh, the school into school. I went out there and did taekwondo with all the kids and talked oh, yeah, to them. Nice. And. Uh, I go through there all the time because we paint a lot in Warrington. I've done a couple houses in Hawk Point, done some over there because I had a subdivision out there that we had to look at some houses in. I was like, where the heck's the subdivision? It was kind of behind the gas stations oh, at yeah, the four more, more rows. It's yeah, I was, I was yeah. thrown off. I was like, because you know, normally you go down past a little bit. There's house subdivisions, all that. We've done houses out there, but yeah. just a nice little subdivision right there. Oh, I had yeah. no clue. Yeah. No clue it was there until we went out there. I was like, wow, well, that's neat. It's kind of kind of hidden in my opinion. Yeah, Hawk Point's a unique place of, you know, of Lincoln County. So we're on the west side of the county. Um, and we're right there at that intersection. So we are eight miles from Troy and 10 miles from Morton. Oh, is that the difference? So, I've never yeah. paid attention to the mileage. Just, I know yeah. it's just about 50-50, yeah. yeah. We're right there. So real close to 50-50. Um, makes it unique for us on the fire department because we mutual aid to both. Really? Do both you for areas. both? So we've got, uh, we cover 120 square miles is our coverage area. So 120 square miles and we have that, that sits 
about 90% of it sets in Lincoln County. Yeah. And then we have some that set in Warren County as well. Now, how does that work with you guys being volunteers and having full-time jobs? Like I, I know at some point in my life, someone's broke it down for me and I probably should know how it works, but like, how does that exactly work? If you, cause I've had, I, man, I've known guys that did it, but yeah. if you're a volunteer, you have a daytime job, you have a life, like what, how does that work if something happens? Yeah, so the um, simplest way to put it is a call comes in and dispatch. They dispatch it out to us, and uh, we have pagers. So we've got little pagers yep. we carry around with us is one method. But with technology now, our phones go off. Yeah. So we pay for an app service that once that call is generated, it goes to that app service. Our phones will go off, and it gives us the information where that call is. If you're available to respond to the call, we can even in that app put, you know, we're responding, not responding, we're unavailable. For me as the chief, it gives me a good visual because I can yes. see if I have people going. And then all the guys and gals respond to the firehouse. So they go from there to the firehouse and so then to the fire, yeah. Yeah. So some of them have the ability to leave their job if yeah. they're close. Um, myself being one of them. If it's a bad enough call, I've had that conversation with the company I work for. Yeah. Like we understand. You know, I would say I would think most companies would be yeah, very understanding. Yeah. And the state of Missouri is really good about backing up that too. Like cool. they've got some stuff in place that uh, that says you know like if your company permits it, we'll back you up because we need that. Yes. There's, there's certain areas that are just I, they're not served by full time departments. Yeah, for sure. I feel like when I was at Jiffy Lube, I, I worked at Jiffy Lube stores after high school. I graduated in two thousand. I feel like I had like somebody there did volunteer because yeah. I feel like we had something where they had to leave or it, it was one of them. I remember like talking to a boss and I'd be like, Oh, uh, how come he gets to leave today? Yeah. You know, I wanna go home. <laughs> and uh, I was like eighteen and um they were, he was kind of breaking it down for me. So that's awesome that the state of Missouri has things in there too. Yeah, there's it. a couple, yeah, there's some things that just kind of help protect um, where your business, you know, it's one thing if you're making a habit of it to where, or abusing it. Well, yeah, but. But that's with anything um, where they kind of help protect the, protect your job more. That's good. That's yeah. good. They should. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Like when it's a volunteer thing like that, that's got to be hard. And depending on what your full time job is too, yeah. like for my painters, I don't always know where they're going to be at mm -hmm. depending on what job they're at, what responsibilities they are. I have, you know, I did, recently we had a job in Clopton and I had a guy from O'Fallon going out there cause he's more experienced with that stuff. And I had a guy in Eolia heading to O'Fallon yeah. and I think it ticked the one off a little bit cause he quit the next week. And it's like, well, I can't just send you what's close to home based yeah. on your skill sets. This is what we did. Exactly. So yeah, I could see that being a, being a, a, a real thing there for the volunteers. Yeah. Logistically can get a little, get a little dicey at times. Um, fortunately for us, we have a good mix where we have some people that work that second or third shift. Yeah. So we got some daytime people around some guys that work close there to Hawk point. And then in turn, um, we've got great support from our full-time departments on either side. So during the day, we have an agreement worked out with Lincoln County Fire, which is based there in Troy. They're a full-time. Um, so there's staff 24-7, mm -hmm. 365. But if there's a call that goes out in our district and we're not having any response or we might just have one person responding, they'll respond out. Okay. So we have mutual aid agreements with all the other departments. Um, That's what I was going to ask next. Like, what happens if everybody's yeah. like, can't make it, can't make it, can't make exactly. it? Like, uh oh. Yeah, it goes to it goes to them, um, and they'll respond to that call. They'll run it for us, and then and then it's vice versa too. If it's you know after five p.m. where a lot of the folks on my department are home, and Lincoln and Troy gets a big call. There you go. We'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll go. We'll go to them. That's the one kind of inner working that I don't think a lot of people understand like all of us fire departments have mutual aid agreements with each other. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, community helping community more or less is what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, when we opened the Taekwondo school off Meyer road, when I first moved it out to Lincoln County, um, Ron, who's the fire chief and was, I think he still is, might be in Wright City, McKnight. Oh, yeah. Ryan McKnight yeah. I know Ron, he had messaged, um, they were out doing something. He's like, oh, I saw your new place. I was like, how are you guys doing that fire? He goes, ah, it's kind of a gray area. It's, we might yeah. be the ones that come to where you're at. I'm like, oh, no way. And they had, him and Josh had kind of told me about it. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. That, yeah. Because I was like, well, Right city, what you guys doing there? But then when you kind of look at the boundary where that mm -hmm. was on Meyer Road, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's super it, close. It's, yeah, they, he said probably if something were to happen bad enough, we'd be the close. He said we'd be the quicker ones to get there from that location. I was like, oh wow, and that makes mm -hmm. sense. And that's good, to, you know. I, and again, I think so many people. 
we grow up, we go to school, we know that there's medics, and that when you dial 911 on your phone, mm-hmm. it shows up. They show up, somebody shows up, saves you. Saves you. Yeah. You know, you know, nine one one is answered. You you know what a fire truck is, and a fireman has the hat, and everything you're taught in little school books. But I think after that, it I don't remember ever studying anything about that in high school, other than you know friends yeah, no. that went into that stuff after after we graduated, maybe. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is is getting that out, and then also now the big education piece is we have a lot of people moving from you know, suburban areas, Yes. The St. Charles County, St. Louis counties, they're moving out, you know, they're moving out this way. They're yep. wanting to fast a little bit more uh, space, you know, not being in kind of all the hustle and bustle. And when they get out to our location, our area, that's where sometimes, you know, we kind of get a, not a pushback from them, but a, a misunderstanding Yes. because it'll take us some time. And then the fire department shows up. They're like, well, we called for an ambulance. We're like, well, we understand that, but we're still the, we're that first line. We're that first response. We're closer. Like, we're closer than, yeah. than what they're coming. And, you know, some of them are like, oh, well, you know, like, we're just used to having a fire department here, or ambulance here within, you know, five minutes. It's like, yeah, unfortunately, like. So that comes along with the acreage and yeah, the nice view along, and, yeah. and Bambi running across the road. Exactly. It, you're out there a little bit. But once they understand and, uh, you know, it's that I tell my guys all the time, I was like, make sure we're being compassionate and educating. And so they know, well, hey, everyone here is volunteer. And once you start telling them that, they're like, wow. You know, some of them don't realize that that still exists. No. Because no. they're so used to having those firehouse that they pass on the way to work yep. or pass on the way to wherever they're going. And they don't realize that once you move out, like there's these some of these <clears> rural <throat> areas, that's, that's what it is. It's a community of firefighters that are volunteering their time and stepping up. Well, and I think a lot of people, too, don't understand the communities like Lincoln County, Troy, you know, the, these, these, you know, Hawk Point, these smaller communities. Mm-hmm. I don't think they get it. Uh, after COVID, you know, my Taekwondo schools blew up tons of students, and I had people sending me messages asking for, like, interviews. Hey, what's different in the water down there? And trying to explain to these people that are in a, you know, Chesterfield-type area where you don't have that hometown, local feel that the different things they're like, Oh, I see you doing a boot. Why do you do a booth at the Lincoln County fair? Uh, Cause I see about a hundred thousand people. I know yeah. I see pretty well everyone I know at the fair. Like they don't get it. Like when people be like, uh, cause I had a guy invite me to an event and I'd tell him, no, I had to go to the fair and I had to send him in our message. I'm like, wait, I'm not going to the fair to hang out and ride rides. Don't think I'm blowing off your event for this. I, yeah. I work a booth. This is a really big thing for us. We see like, well, what do you do? Do you sell package? No, I just see everybody. I know they don't, grasp that like i've had several conversations with people from outside the area that are like huh so you have like hundreds of people come through yeah yeah and i stand there and talk to somebody every minute of the mm-hmm. entire thing pretty much that i know so like like you could just tell it's just lost to them yeah. or when i'm like oh yeah we know this fire chief or this police chief or yeah you know a new neighbor moved in across the street from us the other day and i said hey you see a white suv the older gray-headed guy driving through that's chief taylor he rolls through here and Oh, is he living here? No, no, this is just on his way. He just rolls through kind of checking everything. Mm-hmm. Really? Like, he just totally just, had, that blew him away. And yeah. they were like, really? I was like, yep, that's that's our police chief. Just flag him down. He's he's nice guy. Sit and yeah. chat with you there. Oh, like it still baffles me sometimes. And yeah. I grew up in O'Fallon when it was littler, but it's still not the same. And I mean, the, the change you've had to see from Hawk Point from then till now. I mean, not that it's a bustling me- metropolitan, no. but it has grown. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's grown a lot. I mean, just even just taking a drive around anymore now, you know, we have subdiv- more subdivisions popping up. The occasional one will come again, but I mean, like you go out and there's farm fields that are getting turned into solar farms and there's yeah, that's huge out there. Yeah. How many acres is that? Do you know? I saw somebody post on it the other day. It's hundreds. It's huge because I've had to make a few runs. A friend of mine bought a motel in Warrington and is making it into apartments. Okay. And so we've been painting them. And so I've run out that way more lately than ever. And I was like, that's a big field. I wonder what they're putting out there. And I went yeah. by and then finally I saw, like, you can see some solar stuff in the back. But I'm like, man, yeah. that is that is big. Yeah. And it, it, it goes all through that. And that's one thing, too. Those are some of the things that people don't realize, like, we got to be worried about in the fire service because that's... I think almost 90%, 80% of that is in our fire district. Is it really? Yeah. yeah so you guys I mean, go that far out, huh? Yeah, that's a big area right there. And that's kind of that no man's land gray area. Yeah, yeah. Where Warrington's just... coming from one side, we're coming from the other. 
So it's one of those things that we've watched this growth happen and we see different things expanding. And it's a little bit different, you know, in the cityscapes, it might be more buildings and more businesses. On our side, we see more of like that stuff occurring. Yeah. And, you know, when subdivisions come, it's, you know, these 40 home subdivisions that are all sitting on a couple acres. Well, what comes with that is, you know, then people want to have different activities. They're doing yep. bonfires, they're doing this, they're doing that. And then we've got to keep in mind that, okay, now we're going to these subdivisions that have big acreage, people that aren't used to being out. So, you know, it's like one yeah. of those things where like, hey, it's going to take us some time. Just know that. Like, we're coming for whatever emergency you have, but it's going to take us some time. Well, even probably getting to some of these, I know just bidding stuff and I drive an F-150, like... There's been some places I've went oh, to yeah. to bid that I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. Like, if you don't really know it, man, what was it? It was up in Silex. Oh, I was going to, um, he had the gun shop up there by where my school is uh, before he sold it. I, I've drawn his whole blank on his name, but he's got a machine shop out there. But the first route it took me, I'm driving through some corn. All of a sudden, I come up to... Uh, the Quiver River. And it's like, cross here. I'm like, cross here. That was, it was moving pretty good. I'm like, I'm not crossing here. And I called them and they're like, no, 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 go back this way. And I was like thinking to myself, good thing I wasn't like in a real big hurry to get to you guys. Cause it, Google yeah. took me all the way out of the way and took me to a spot where the river was up. I wasn't crossing it. Yeah. So, you know, when you get more to rural areas like that too, I don't think people realize that it's no. a big ass truck to get back there. Yeah. And the fact too, of like knowing that we have the different equipment. So like, we also have to be on our toes of knowing, Oh, we can't take a big truck on this. We're yes. going to take one of our smaller apparatus, but you know, that's a perfect point. You know, you say like those crossings, there's still roads that will lead you to the river yes. and then people will attempt to cross it. And then what happens inevitably is yeah. they get stuck. We're going out and then they're like, well, we thought this was a road. And we're like, well, unfortunately. Kind of is, but there was is, water over it. Yeah, it's mostly for the tractors and the farm yeah. <laughs> farm equipment. It's done that to me a couple times when you get out there. There's a few of them. There's one off H um, that always tries to take us down and up like a little, I call it a pig trail, into the back of a really nice subdivision. Because yeah. I was driving out the one day and I called the office. I'm like, where the hell did you guys send me? <laughs> like, I'm looking at just trailers falling apart and everything. I'm like, nobody out here is getting a paint job. And I crest the hill and you could see all the nice houses. And I went on up and it took me in the back way. And Google still, every time I painted four houses and they're now always tries to take me that way. Takes you that way. Always does. So I think that's something else too, that people have to keep in mind with you guys being local. That's a big help because you, you know, those places. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly what it is. We have a few guys that are kind of out of our district um, that are just, they've been in the department, possibly moved away. Um, they're still close enough though, where they come volunteer. And then we have guys that, I mean, like myself, born and raised there. So yeah. it's the fact that there's times where we have to remind some of them when that call comes in, they might not know what it is. Um, some of our members that used to be on, like they put a call out, Oh, that's so-and-so's house. Someone's like, okay. And then we'd have new guys be like, what is he talking about? Oh, yeah. You'd be like, well, yeah, we, you see the address, but he's saying that because some of us know that, hey, go to this person's house, even though that person might not be there anymore. Yeah. And, you know, we get there and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, we got here. And the people are like, yeah, what, um, we heard somebody get here and say, you know, you guys are going to Charlie's house. That's not our name. Yeah. And I just use it. And I was like, oh, well, that was uh, who that, used to live here. And they're like, yeah. oh. It's a local thing. And yeah. then they finally get there like, okay. I was like, yeah, I was like, all these guys are, you know, we're all from around here. Some yeah. of us born and raised here. Yeah. So you might've played at that house when you're a kid or exactly. something. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes down to the family aspect of it. You know, um, looking back like my dad, I can remember watching my dad. He was a volunteer on the fire department. Uh -huh. So I can remember watching him when I was younger. Um, back then there was no pagers. They had a thing called the fire phone was what really? I always called it. So the house phone would ring nonstop. So there would be no ring, pause, ring, pause. It would just continuously oh, wow. ring and you'd pick it up. And that would be how dispatch would let everybody know. They just get on it and they just start talking. Here's what the call is. And somebody, whoever the first person on the fire department to pick it up would be writing something down to make sure. And everybody would go to the firehouse and they'd write that on the board of where they were going. So if you came into the firehouse after everybody else, you would at least know. Where, you knew where to where go. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. super interesting. That's yeah. a really cool fact. Yeah. So it's like one of those things of it evolves. And then um, my grandpa, which would be my dad's dad, he was... <clears throat> on the fire department as well. So it's, so it's just been a family thing for it, you. Yeah, it's one of those so things. So is it like a given that you were going to do it or was no. it something you you always wanted to do or maybe didn't know? It was one of those, so graduated from Troy, 
in um, 2006, went on to the University of Missouri Columbia, so I was at Mizzou for four years, got a degree in um, hospitality management, uh, came back home, worked up there for a little while, just wasn't a fit, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to head back, I got a degree, this, that, um, found a job and connected with some and some friends that I was with before and guys that I knew from the community, and they're like, hey, if you're you know, ever interested, uh, we need always need volunteers on the fire department. Hmm. I was like, well, we'll see. So it was like after a year, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. So I went up, did, you know, filled out the application. They sat there and talked about it. They're like, all right, yeah, we'd love to have you on, which, I mean, we really don't turn away volunteers. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, well, there's a little bit of a vetting process. However, you know, if you're wanting to come volunteer and give back to the community, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take you on. For sure. Uh, we can teach the things we need to teach. So, yeah, that was back in 2000 and. 10, I think is when I started. So, I mean, I'm coming on 14 years nice. almost of being on the department. So there's been some times where I've had to step away for a while just yeah. with life. Um, oh. We've got multiple guys that way where things happen, you know, maybe there's a new kid in the, in, you know, in the family. So I was just or, thinking probably a new baby yeah. or something would be a, a Babies, time that you'd have to. Yep. Work gets different. They switch shifts, don't have as much time to put in. Um, and, you know, as long as the communication's there, it's fine. Step away for a while. Um, I, I had to step away for about a year just because I had different things going on, yeah. work, this, that, and the other. Stepped away for a year, came back, and more or less kind of picked up where I left off and just going from there. So now as a volunteer, do you guys have like certain hours that you put in at the firehouse? Or is yeah. it, uh, you know, like training-wise? or Because I know with like full-time they they sleep there you know they're yeah. there for so many hours you know like what all type of breakdowns ray kind of went into that about the medics and how that works with them so like how does that work with you guys being volunteer yeah like being all volunteer yeah so we meet every monday so every monday we're at the firehouse and we kind of we rotate around so we do trainings um we've got a guy on our department that's a full-time firefighter that handles a lot of our trainings for us now so he's, nice. he's bringing stuff to keep us fresh and you know keep us on our toes and and He's got the knowledge base. That's what he does. So why not utilize that? Oh, for sure. So he does, he does a lot of our trainings. So when we're talking fire service trainings, we do those. Um, usually we do like every other Monday. We'll do in those. And then the Mondays, so like I always say like one and three, we're doing trainings. Two and four, we're checking trucks, doing stations. And then we rotate in medical. So um, it's that just that big aspect of Lincoln County Ambulance will come up and train with us nice more or less we're asking them to come and teach us like hey what do you need from us when we call out because 80 percent of our calls are medical assists helping out the ambulance um getting there getting eyes on so we can let them know what kind of call we have well you're getting it ready to pass off to them yeah, when, yeah. once they because mm -hmm. you guys are first on scene yeah because even as ray said you know they're they're in troy out on the west side we've got the um, ambulance base up in Auburn, which is the Silex area, but I mean, that's quite a ways from us. That's still point. all, yeah. So, you know, they're coming from base one here in Troy to come out to us. Oh, that's a good drive. In Hawk Point. It's still a bit of a haul at times, depending on where they're at mm -hmm. location wise. Yeah, so if they're at those. the base coming out there, it's a pretty good little Yeah, scoop. they got to get, you know, and depending on traffic, we all know how Troy traffic gets. <laughs> Just <laughs> wait till the overpass. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. So it's one of those things that that's what we do. So that's how the training works. Um, and then I have parameters that is set. Um, we require everyone to have eight hours a month. So what that eight hours is, is between trainings um, and the trucks. And then I started an initiative where I give them credit for calls ran. So like I told them, I was like, I'm not giving you full credit. Like you can't go run a fire call that's eight hours and then be like, well, I'm good for the month. Yeah. Like, no, that's, <laughs> we can't go down that road. So I give them a, a quarter hour. So they get 0.25 hours for each call. And what that does is that just gives them incentive of like, hey, if you know you're going to be a little short, make sure you're, you're hitting calls and you're, you're getting these calls because you're going to get some credit for it. You're going to get yeah. towards that hours. And um, we actually had the conversation last night. One of them's like, well, why, you know, you, you're seeming to really be cracking down on the hours. I was like, because we have to. We have to make sure everyone's on the same page. Yep. That we're all, we all have, you know, the training and we're all in the un same understanding because it's so crucial when we go into some of these calls that we're all reading from the same sheet of music. Well, and not working together 24-7 at a full-time firehouse together, yeah. keeping that team 
you know, when you go in on something like that to where you're operating as a well-oiled machine and as a, a, a team when you're not together every single day is probably a, a very hard thing to adapt to. Yeah, it Or is. to... to Manage like like you know if you're at the firehouse all the time you're constantly doing everything you're working your shifts you're doing your rotation you're you know obviously if you're full time you're going out on a lot more calls mm-hmm. that's probably just become second nature but for you guys volunteering that's probably a whole nother app and it's, you know a whole nother level to focus on yeah and we really have to tailor it to what we what we do yeah you know so there's you know I tell the guys any kind of training they want to do, if they find a training, the state offers a lot of training. Some of the local area, you know, local fire departments, when we get closer to like St. Charles County, Lincoln County will host some trainings. Any training they want to go to, go to. A lot of it's free. Yeah. So a lot of it, they have the ability to go to being part of the fire service. Outside of that, we do some specialty stuff. Um, however, some of the guys are like, well, I really want to do this. I was like, well, we'll have to find you a class because we're not going to bring that. Like some of this stuff just, whether it be cost or just the fact that we just don't run those calls. What would like an example of that? So be? like one that we do, we just did a training on that we do have would be grain bed engulfment. So like yeah. we're, we're pretty heavy on that. That's we, yeah, that sounds because right. Because it makes sense. We're farm, you know, we're very farm heavy community. Yeah. Um, but like a high angle rescue or a rope rescue. Yeah. I no, can't remember ever really running a rope rescue course. Now I'll say this and I'll get into something in the next couple of weeks, but <laughs> that's uh, how it always works, yeah. right? Fortunately for us, we get to fall back on the fact too that we have those people that are qualified that are coming right from Troy that are going to come out and give us a hand. Oh, for us. sure. So like we know the basics, we know what we need to do and what information we need to kind of gather and things we can do to prepare for them to come out. Uh, but that's one of those things where we're like, okay, we really need to focus in on what we need to hone our skills on to best serve our community and then know that we have resources outside of that. Well, that makes complete sense. You know, uh, with painting, you know, I wouldn't, if, if I have guys come in, they're like, oh yeah, I paint a lot of these big uh, water towers and stuff like that. I have no use for them because we don't paint water tower. We don't, Yeah. I need guys that know how to paint the inside of houses and stained exactly. decks. That's the two things yeah. I get phone calls on. So it makes complete sense with focusing on what you're going to do. It, mm-hmm. If you guys were all, you know, certified at, you know, something that involved really tall buildings, well, not a lot of, six, seven story buildings and exactly. all points. So yeah. it would make complete sense to when you're volunteer like that, to focus in on the smaller picture, like dial it in to, okay, we go on a lot of these. This is 80% of our calls. Let's get really good at this. Yeah. Cause obviously it's going to be something you're going to call upon more. And that's exactly right. That's what we do. It's, we really focus in on making sure that, you know, of course we're going to understand the fire side of it. Yes. That's, that's what, I mean, it's in our name. Yes. Um, but then we really blow that out too of just how many different fires. That's what some people don't realize. You know, they think, oh, fire department. They go to, you know, oh, somebody's house is on fire. Well, yeah, that's part of it. But, you know, there's also fields on fire. You know, these are woodland fires. Oh, I bet fires. that'd be a big and, one too for you yeah, guys, huh? So, like, we have all these different things, and then it's looking at it to where that's also how we tailor our equipment that we have in, the, in our base, um, which is a struggle. That's the one thing I'm learning as chief is, you know, there's a lot of different aspects that – it is like a business because it's just we have to answer to our ta- like our tax yeah, our community. Yeah. Um, we have a board that sits no different than all the rest of them. So we have a five member board um, that meets once a month, and they're making sure all the finances and everything and whatnot goes good. And then me as the chief, it's really trying to orchestrate all that different stuff, making sure we've got training lined up for the folks making sure they're keeping up on their training, making sure all the different apparatus we have is rocking and rolling correctly and, and ready to be put in service. And it's just that kind of ever revolving. And I've begin to shift that mindset to where, you know, it's like, all right, really it is looking at it like a business. Yeah, you I've have got, to. I know the good thing is, is I know how much money I have though. Well, that's set every year. So, you yeah. know, our, we know what our operating budget is. And then outside of that, we just have to start moving pieces and, and, connecting lines and you know making sure okay if we're going to use this money for this and this money for that and then at the end of the year be able to show like hey this is what we did because we have to be able to answer the taxpayers with that hey here's what we did with the money that you provided for us well you probably have to even to be more focused on that stuff than a regular like entrepreneur would because of the fact you answer to the board to taxpayers Mm -hmm. you have those people but looking at it you know the big hot topic this year or term this year has been entrepreneur you, you are being an entrepreneur because you, you, 
you are running it like it's a business. You're treating it like that. You're focusing on budgets and different things that, you know, it's the same thing like an entrepreneur or a business owner would focus on. Yeah. You're just, like you said, you just know what your budget is. You've got this much to work with this year. It's not like yeah. there's going to be a, a peak or a, you're going to have a, a period where a customer doesn't pay or something. You, you've got your budget set. Yeah, we've got the budget. But it's very similar. Exactly. And the one thing that we were, um, it hit me the other day. I was like, you know, we don't bring money in per se. We'll do a fundraiser here and there. Yeah. But a lot of times when we do a fundraiser, it's a fill the boot. And then we're writing that check and donating it. Yeah. It's, you know, however, we're more or less getting paid and making uh, I say we get paid in knowing that our community supports us because I've seen a lot of communities that, you know, you just, I mean, we've seen all over the place, yeah. whether it be fire, police, ambulance, they don't support them. Yep. You know, oh, they, you guys make too much money. You take too much of our tax pay. You take too much of our tax dollars, this, that, and the other. You don't do anything right with the funds. And we strive to not ever turn into one of those departments, Yeah, which we're very gracious of our community. They they support us 100%. You know? That whole community is amazing out there. I've heard so many good things from the the um, uh, the PTA to just everything. Yeah. I have heard so many good things about the community out there and how they take care of everything and the different people out there, the business owners out there that contribute and do so much. Yeah, and they really do. I mean, it's one of those... The, you know, you bring up the PTO, they have a spaghetti PTO, dinner. PTO, that was it. That, yeah. That's what I heard about spaghetti dinner. Yeah. Yep, that's so exactly. They, every year they do a spaghetti dinner and we make sure we, do, you know, we donate, but we donate what we know how to do. So we donate a fire truck ride. Yeah. So they bid on a fire truck ride to school. What kid isn't going to like to show up to school oh, in a fire man. truck? So we go. That'd break me if you guys did that. <laughs> I could just see so them. <laughs> we go pick them up and take them to school in the That's fire cool. truck. That's cool. So it's one of those things too where, you know, it it's allows us to be a part of it. Yep. We're not, we already got the truck. We're staying within our district. Yeah. And it's twofold. I also, for the most part, now I get to take that truck and I'm making sure it's, you know, fully operational beforehand, of course, because yep. we're getting ready to put one of our youth in it. And then outside of that, it's given us some exposure because we're getting it out. That's great. There. Yeah. So it's awesome. And then every October we go up to the school as well. That's fire prevention month. So we get in front of the kids and, you know, from the kindergartners all the way to the fifth graders and just going through everything and teaching them those, those values of when we yeah. talk fire safety and a lot of the folks there on the, well, almost all the folks on the fire department that can, will be a part of it. And you can just tell it kind of, it refuels them a little bit Oh, because for sure. they get that, they get that ability to go in and, they know, hey, okay, this is this is what it's about because every kid has. I mean, we've been asked so many questions, off the wall questions by kids. Oh. It cracks me up, but we all just love being up there because you can just see them. They just light up. Any every kid like that, you know. Well, can we get in the fire truck? Of course, you can get in the fire truck. <laughs> we want to make sure that you are not afraid of us at all. Because for we're sure, here for you. And that's what's so nice about the smaller communities is they do that. People like yourself, all over Lincoln County are involved in everything in the community. Um, I had someone ask me last night, um, works for a chiropractor, was like, hey, we got all these ice packs. How can we, like, what can we do with these at the fair, blah, blah, blah. I was like, reach out to Ray. Maybe the medics can can use them or mm -hmm. hand them out to people that are hot. I was like, I would talk to him because he's there's so much to be coordinated up at the fair. I was like, that'd be your best bet. Oh, yeah. I was like, if he can't take them, then drop them by my booth and we'll toss them at people or something. I don't know. I was yeah. like, it gets hot because I get kids come by all the time want water or stuff oh, and yeah. um we were talking about it but i was like there's that community involvement is there where people can they can meet you guys and they can talk to them and i think that's so important I, and i think we've seen a lot of that coming back into play a couple years ago with the police department going around and just you know you'd see videos of uh, uh police officers playing basketball with kids yeah. or firefighters doing it or the you know the different people in the community getting back like active and known with their communities. I don't think we've had that issue out here, but I do think you see a lot of that in the news. You see a lot of it in society to where it's yeah, 100%. shunned on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I don't feel that's an attitude that anyone out here has, you know, everybody's happy with the, the tax dollars and stuff going and, and it's, yeah. I mean, heck, I'm more than happy about it. It's like, no, that's, you know, everybody's doing things, growing and building. It just makes our community better. Yeah. And that's the one thing, too, which is unique, the amount of departments we have in the in Lincoln County. Yeah. Well, that's one thing, you know, like we've got in the central part, we've got Lincoln County Fire Protection District 1. Yeah. 
And then outside of that, you have us in Hawk Point, you have Northwest, you've got Ellsbury Fire Protection District, Winfield Foley Fire Protection District, Old Monroe Fire Protection District, um, Eolia, they come down into Lincoln County. So that's just the one servicing, serving Lincoln County. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about seven, or six, or six or seven of us. People, people don't realize how big Lincoln County is. No. Yeah. And it's one of those things where we've, from Hawk Point, have went all the way over to Ellsbury or over to Winfield and vice versa. We've had mm-hmm. Winfield over in our district. So I see other, you know, and, and I'm not going to say everybody agrees 100% of the time because it doesn't happen. No. That's a lot. You're putting yeah. a lot of personalities together. There's yeah. going to be, you know, whatnot. But the thing that always amazes me, and the fairs are great representation of it, is at the end of the day, when everyone knows that we need to come together and do something, we'll do it and, we'll, and, the, and we get it done. Yes. And it's a big coordination of a lot of different people, too, when it comes into that. Um, for five years prior to the job I have now, I was the emergency management director here in the county. Oh, okay. So I was you know, working, and the fair was one, one of the things we planned and everything. And that's always – I had to sit back sometimes and remind myself, even in the frustration of it, just because there's so many moving pieces. Oh, it, I can't even imagine. Just looking at it and be like, you know, all these departments come together to do this to make sure essentially that the citizens of yes. the county and the visitors have the safest experience they can. And it's, you know, and then the, we got guys coming out working and it's a hundred and something degrees and, you know, yes, standing is. out there walking around and whatnot. And, but they're still doing it they're with, yes. you know, no, no real, you know, they're not really getting anything out of it. Yeah. The fire departments were just coming and it's more or less like my guys are like, wow, we get a free front row seat to the, yeah. to the truck and tractor pull. And cool. if, that, if they're about it, perfect. Because at the end of the day, that's that's what they're there. That's what they want to do. They want to give back, and that's how they're they're able to do it. And that's what's great. And I don't think people realize that when people get shitty attitudes with them and stuff like that. I don't think they realize like how much of that is not collecting a paycheck, and yeah. that most people that do that are not doing it for a paycheck. I know so many firefighters I've known over the years that have a business. Because of their their shift, if they're full time, they're able to have a business exactly. too. Yeah. That it the firefighting is really not their main thing. It's it's a calling. It's something they want to do. Yeah. And I know people don't also grasp. And I, I kicked myself for this last year. I left the fair early, maybe Friday night. I don't remember why, but I went. Maybe I drove. Maybe I drove you guys down to mom's car. And so I came back up past the fair and I was mad. I didn't take a video of it because when I try to explain to friends of mine that aren't from around here, like we shut the Taekwondo school down the first year I stayed open and I realized that was stupid because everybody yeah. goes to the fair. Yeah, I had people come up and be like, man, this is my 23rd year here. I'm like, you've come to the fair every year for 23 years. Yep. Yep. And they tell me about family events. They've missed like, I was blown away. Like the oh, first yeah. two or th- first, yeah, two years, some people, cause I wasn't from out here that told me I was, I mean, my jaw just dropped. I'm like, wow, you don't let anything get in the way of the fair. So I said, forget it. We're closing a school. No one's coming in. It was mm-hmm. everybody who'd just come up and see me at the booth. Like, hey, yeah, we, yeah, we skipped class tonight. I'm like, huh, glad I staffed it. But people can't really wrap their head around how big it is. And, and when I left early and was driving up the road, because I always park in the vendor was, lot, and I just zip out. I don't ever pay attention to it. What? I think it was storming. It was I don't remember. Storm. Maybe it was going to storm. That's why and we wrapped had up. To put it down. Maybe that was the night. We left early. Yeah. But you could really see mm-hmm. how big it oh, is. Oh, yeah. How many people are there because everything was still lit up. Everything was still going. Yeah. So for, like, you guys to coordinate what you do and, you know, you're dealing with teens that are unsupervised, people that have went without water all day, yep. um, drunks. That's, like, the biggest thing. But I have to tell people, like, my first year setting up – I was like, well, let's see how this goes. Because nothing against Wright City, but I set up at Strauss and Bash one year, and I went home early. Um, I remember grabbing, um, actually, the fire department to help me carry my stuff out because I had a heavy bag set up, and it was just drunk. So, hey, yeah. watch yeah. this. And I'm yeah. like, hey, guys, uh, went over and grabbed the fire. I'm like, I need to leave. Crotty booth, drunks, not really working, working out, out tonight. Well. <laughs> yeah, this the, they're like... You know, we were just standing here kind of thinking the same thing. I was like, cool, help me carry my crap. Let's go. Let's get me out of here before somebody here. Because they were like missing. Heavy bags are big. They're missing it. They were trashed. Uh, This is way before you were born. And um, yeah, hey, karate man started coming out at about 8 o'clock. I was like, yep, 
hey, Karate Man's rolling out. We're good to go. But I really don't have any of that at Lincoln County. I mean, you do get it at the Lincoln County Fair. You do get some. You yeah. guys do get your fair share. I've been walking out to the car before, and, oh, I, yeah. and they're talking people down. They're chilling, you know. Um, you know, when you get the teens, I've had some teens come by the booth. Hey, man, can you call somebody? We're having an issue. And uh, I've grabbed uh, different sheriffs I knew, but but you guys as first responders and they're working that event. I mean, it's it's a long week of yeah. babysitting at some point, you know, yeah. taking care of a lot of stuff that should be common sense, but it get, does get so ridiculously hot. Yeah, well, it will gets hot, and then we never really know what we're gonna get because yeah. we're at all the different events. You know, you go from one night having a a garden tractor pull where you're like, okay, so you go to another night where they're smashing cars into each other at a demo derby and you've got another tractor pull happening and it's just like you've got all these different avenues you're like okay something bad can go wrong at all this and then you throw a carnival on top of it that just has a mass amount of people around it yep and like you said the biggest thing one of the biggest things we deal with is just people not drinking water you know coming out and you know then you get your cup stackers that are hanging out at the beer garden and it's like we you can just kind of i've been going so long you kind of drive around and you're like all right, we're probably going to have some issues here. We're going to be up here later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I'll see people walk by the booth. I'll be like, well, he'll get thrown out later. I'll just yeah. kind of watch him go by. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'll see him later, a little bit later, yeah. walking him out. You'll hear the conversation. If I see that SOB again, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll get some exciting out of that one later, you know? Okay. Yeah. The people watching is great if you're at a booth. I'm not going to lie. It, that uh, part gets interesting, but your guys' jobs and coming through and everything you guys do, I do not envy that at all. And we set it up. So when that gets set up, it's like its own little, you know, more or less a city for that time. Oh, for we sure. Have, we have I a trailer see that. there, which is dispatch. So we got dispatchers that are sitting out there at the fair. We're up in that far corner. Yep. Um, every night we've got EMS, we've got law, fire when there's big events happening, and at, every night. So different departments step up when it comes to the fire side, different departments step mm-hmm. up, and then... Um, the law enforcement, you know, the sheriff's office handles that and um, who they have out there each night. And then the ambulance rotates people through for their shift. So, I mean, it's one of those oh. things that, depending, and then when you throw weather on the, in the mix of it at times, yep. um, there was two years ago when I was still doing it from the EMA side, we had, that was the year we had that pretty gnarly storm on like a Thursday. Yep. started coming. And um, we we're actually what it was. talking to the National Weather Service. Yeah. So it's like, they're telling us, oh, yeah, it's probably going to, and um, I'll never I think it was three it. years ago when it oh, flattened it? all the booths. Yeah, three yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 because that was, was my like a- that was my second year going, I think. And I learned a lesson because I had a news – I had I brought, like, actual stuff from the school that kind of meant something to me. Luckily, it didn't get destroyed, but our, our first ever newspaper article that all the kids signed oh, yeah, yeah. was up there. It was smashed. I was like – Oh, so now I just take like crap. I'm like, hey, if all this stuff blows away, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I, I learned yeah. my lesson that year. I think it was three, three years. That was a rough right. one. Yeah. That was the one where that wind come through. Because it was on a Thursday. Yeah. And it well, didn't occur till everybody, like we've had a lot of people already in yep. the gates. And then it decided to pop up. Well, off. my dad called me. He's like, I'm headed up there. Now he's 82 now. So he was 78, 79. And he's like, I'm headed up there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the booth, make sure I'm like, we're looking 60 mile an hour plus winds. Like you yeah. grab that booth. We're going to pick you up in another County. Exactly. I was like, don't go grab the booth. We got to do something. I'm like, it, it's in God's hands now. Just let it go. <laughs> and, uh, I went up there the next morning and immediately went to Walmart, bought a new booth. Cause my booth was in little pieces. That was a rough year. I felt bad for everybody up there that year too. Cause the lady that was in charge, they ripped her a new one up. Like she controlled the weather. It was so stupid. Well, yeah, I know we knew everybody was, was mad at her. Yeah. We knew it was, coming that was the thing you know um the guy that runs the livestock no no two years ago you're right that's when the bad one was coming in you guys were all watching everything but we didn't get smashed it was was three or four years ago when everything got got smashed smashed yeah no you're right i remember that better a little bit better because we were watching the clouds come yeah i remember that and everybody was up because the sheriff everybody was running around up front saying hey we're on the lines uh, at the gate with the the national weather service i remember that that was that was two years ago yeah, that was crazy because we could watch it rolling yeah. in. Yeah, because I told them when they came and asked me, I was like, it's going to hit here in five minutes. Yep. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, that's what they all say. I was like, I'm telling you. And it, I mean, he's like, it was actually like four minutes and some change. Something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Like, like, Sorry, oh, I was my bad. He's like, it's off. And I was like, oh, I think we were a little bit more prepared for this one. That's the one. So what I did for that one, I took the booth down. 
You put laid everything, blocks. and then I took the cinder blocks we got, and I ratchet strapped them. I like had everything Keep down, everything. and oh, yeah. some people are like looking. I'm like, <laughs> I lost everything one year. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking any yeah, chances. We carried sure. everything to the truck we could, and then I just strapped everything to the ground and said, "Let's just see what happens." And, and it uh, was all there. It was all there, but everything was slid around. Everybody, because I think a few people stayed in their mm-hmm. booths that night or something. And they said it, it got ugly. That, that is, that's the year we, we just, I just ratcheted. You, you guys were all coming through saying it was going to get real bad. Yeah. Cause it and I was like, well, I'm then... not, I, who was it? Maybe it was Hollingsworth stopped by my booth and he goes, it's, it's real. I think drop it everything. I was like, cool. I, I just folded it all up and got out of there. Yeah. Cause it braked a little bit and they were able to get the auction in and then it came then back it just, and just, boom. it was storming and everything else. But it's just always that, that fair is always one of those things that you just never know. It's just a crapshoot. You never, you really don't. You don't know what the temp's going to be. You don't know. It's That's why I try to tell people, too. You just don't know. With our weather in Missouri anyways and then the fair, and it, you, you know, last year I think we had a couple nice days. Yeah. But then the year before that was like 100 plus. I mean, I remember just sitting in the booth, just felt like I was melting. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. brutal. We've, uh, we've joked about how I've got a Boyer painting trailer, and every year at the fair they're like, you know, you can put a window unit in park it you get two booths put it there and then we could just go sit in it i'm like well, no i'm not okay, Deion sanders see. has got that new cooler that he pushes it's got the two yeah, yeah, and yeah. uh the office manager and stuff i got schools like you know christmas is until december but I, I i could really go for one of those at the <laughs> fair i'm like no you guys will fight over it we're not getting one <laughs> but yeah it's it's such a crapshoot but it's it's experiencing the fair is experiencing Lincoln County, how everybody comes together. You see, like I try to explain to people, I spend 90% of the the time just standing here talking to people. I Last year we did a spin wheel and collected some information. It was a waste of time. We've got some prizes and some games this year. I'm not doing that. It was kind of a, you know, oh, nice. they could spin the wheel, raffle stuff up. It, 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 it just honestly was a waste because I spend 90% of mine just catching up with everybody. Yeah. Just see it, everybody. And we get so many people come by and are like, oh, we, we just haven't made it up to the school. Or, yeah, we did, but you guys looked really busy, so we drove off. And it, just being there and being a part of the community. And I, I tell any of my friends, I've had different friends open businesses out here, and I'm like, you have to get involved. And they're like, well, like, how involved? I'm like, you need to go to all this stuff. I was like, you don't have to hit everything. I definitely don't. There's a lot of spaghetti dinners and chili things and different stuff because I'm at the dojo in the evenings. I don't go to. Yeah. But you got to make an attempt to go to stuff because that's how this community works. That's yeah, and uh, yeah, it's that's across the board in the yep. county. Like if you're not gonna, if you're gonna think you're gonna open a business and either one be like, oh, you know, they'll come. Yeah, they're gonna come and they're gonna check you out. But if they don't see you around, yep, they're gonna be like, all right, well, they just want to be here. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, and they'll, that they'll time, move, you're not top of mind. They'll move on. Yep. And but yet if you know you get involved and they see your name and whatnot. They'll patronize you. They'll patronize the business because they see that you want to be a part of yep. what it is. They support those who support them. And that's something yeah. I tell everybody that I was lucky when I opened up out here. I had tried to get really involved in Wentzville and it was all, there was always a hiccup. There was always something. When I moved the school out to Lincoln County, I picked up on K Flynn signs everywhere. Woody Brothers signs everywhere. Oh, yeah. Flynn drilling signs everywhere. Mooney signs. Like, I picked up on what the people that had been out here for years were doing, and I said, okay, that's what I've got to do because that's what the big names out here are doing to be involved. If I want to be a part of this community, because I didn't even, um, when we first moved the school out here, I still lived in O'Fallon, and that ice storm hit. Okay, where all yeah, the kids yeah. were trapped at school. And I was, yeah. I, I remember reaching out to uh, Rachel South and I was like, hey, if I buy a bunch of pizza, can you guys get them to the kids? I'm in O'Fallon. And I remember sitting there and my wife's like, what's the matter? I said, I don't like the fact we're here and I can't go do anything to help because I could at least go around to the schools and do martial art classes, go to each school for an hour or two and just take targets and kick and punch, like give the kids something to do. I was mm-hmm. like, I could hit every school, I'll be up all night, but give the kids something to do. But I can't because I'm in O'Fallon and you couldn't get into Troy. Yeah. I was like, if yeah. we were in Troy, we could do more. And <clears throat> and Rachel coordinated the delivery of all the pizzas. We bought 50 pizzas or something um, to get food out, you know, just to get stuff to the staff and the yeah. kids. Well, we were, uh, yeah, I remember that ice storm quite. That was rough. We were 
taking kids home. Yes. Like the fire departments, we had chains on trucks and UTVs and we were going and picking kids up and getting them home. So Yeah, it was crazy. And I remember that really bothered me. So once we moved out here, I was like, I want to be involved. I want to be a business that gives back. And then that was what kind of I explained to people post COVID. Um, you know, we signed up like 45 students and no, 90 students in 45 days. Wow. Blew the doors off. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. No parking. Um, it, it was, it was, I don't ever want to do that again. It was way too many people. I did not, it wasn't pandemonium. I just couldn't even learn anyone's names. It was mm -hmm. just too many. Your brain just can't do it. But people ask me, well, what are you doing? I'm like, we've always been involved in the community. So when everybody got the chance to get out of their house, we were one of the first things on mind. I was like, it really isn't, I didn't, they were expecting me to be like, oh yeah, I used this magical hashtag or yeah, yeah I did this one TikTok video. Like nobody could wrap their head around it. That's just how the community was. I, I had a little old lady come up at uh, one of the trunk or treats and she goes, I seen your name. I don't know what you're doing, honey. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it. I have seen your name. I've seen your ad. I've seen or heard something about you every day for several weeks. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I was like, okay, it's working. Yeah. And I was like, my sure. wife was like, crap, now what do we got to do? I'm like, no, everybody's starting to know and learn it. And that's where that importance kind of came in with how important Lincoln County really is. The amount of people that listen to this podcast, it, it doesn't even truly reflect in our numbers, I think. Because basically, like, you got some people on Apple, some people on Amazon, some people are on YouTube. I kind of, like, I thought to myself, oh, we had 500, 500, 500, 500 people listened. No, I actually think it's unique, and it's way more than 500 now, but I think it's unique. I think some people are on Apple, some are on Android, some go to Facebook, yeah. some go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because everywhere I go, somebody's like, oh, I listened to that one episode. They, they got somebody, like, the support and the amount of people that actually are tuning in has been huge. Well, yeah, and then when there's the diversity of, you know, you got a business here. And then yep. What the, you know, and then you got guys like me that are kind of involved in a little bit of everything from, you know, you have Justin on the Guild. I've been a part of the Guild yes. now for quite a while. Then, you know, I see Ray. I was like, oh, well, I work with Ray. And then you see different people. You're like, oh, I know that person. You know, let's, you know, let's see what, they're, what yeah. they have to say on it. And it's crazy that... At times, I'm like, oh, there's other communities that are like this. And then you go try to search, and you're like, man, they really, you really can't find anything else like no, this. No, even even other small communities sometimes are not like this. Like, I, I can't, and, and it's been a resounding uh, you know, thing that anyone that listens to a lot of them, you'll hear this. I talked to Dr. Penny about it, Julie Rogers about it. Talk to everybody about it. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And that was what attracted me to be out here. When I first looked to put my school out here and I reached out to the chamber, Rachel was, that just had a million things for me. Uh, everywhere we went, people were like, yeah, yeah, we'd love to do that because I had always tried to teach classes or do this or do that. And I went out to Wright City. That's how I knew Ron and all them. As I went to Wright City when I was in Wentzville, I would teach classes at uh, the elementary school out there, martial oh, arts yeah. stuff. And then we did a wellness winter thing through Above and Beyond Chiropractic. And um, I used to uh, take the firefighters to workouts when I was in uh, Wentzville. Do a lot of different stuff, but it, it, it was it was going away from that. It was going away from the old Wentzville, the old small mm -hmm. town to what it is now, yeah. which kudos them. It's big. It's great. They've done, they brought in tons of business, oh, not, yeah. not shitting on that by any aspect, but what we have in, in Lincoln County is different. And I, I talked with a friend of mine, uh, last year at, uh, uh, one of the events on Main Street, they all blur together now. We grew up in O'Fallon together, and we were talking about how we'd walk up to Civic Park as little kids because I lived in a uh, subdivision where you cut through wooded area and get to Civic Park. And we talked about how we'd do that, and our parents, there was um, concerts on Main Street. They'd shut Main Street down, stuff that there's no way in hell that ever happened yeah. these days. I wouldn't let them out of my sight at an event up there, but I, I did it. We ran around like that all the time mm -hmm. as kids. That community, that, that feel is still here. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And we see that even being on the fire department. Like, I don't realize when I go other places that people don't see kids on bikes. Yeah, yeah. Or kids, you know, out. We were walking out. this walk in Sunday's year night. Kids are going through our bikes. I was smiling. I'm like, I yeah. love it. Like, we've got, we'll sit up at the firehouse on a Monday night and, you know, there'll be some kids on bikes or a mini bike or a, a go kart yeah. or whatever it might be. And then, Electric you know, scooter. a mom, yeah. any of that. Yeah, exactly. Any of that stuff. A mom and, you know, the kid walking yep. this, that, and the other. And it's like, you know, we were talking about it one night up there. We're like, you know, there's some places that don't see this. Like, yeah. there's, they just don't. They, it's home from work at the house. They may go in their backyard, but they're not going out and, you know, walking. Um, 
you know, our firehouse is directly in the middle of town at yeah. that point. So we're right in the middle of town. We, you know, in the future, yeah, we're going to need to build a new place. But it's one of those things that, like, I've told the guys, if I'm still around, like, it needs to be here still. Like, we'll find some place to park stuff. But it's just something to do with that being right in the middle of yeah. town. We'll get the occasional, like, kid that walks by and comes up, well, can I look at the, yeah, you can look at the fire truck. That's you cool. You know, whatever one you want to go through. Like, yeah, let us, you know, we'll pull them out, let them get into them. Because, I mean, that's what we need to be there for. That's why we're there. Yep. If, if they want to see the fire truck, yeah, climb up in the thing. Um, that's the one big thing that I, I think that's what drew me back to. Because um, I've had friends, you know, we go through, you know, you go to high school, you graduate, go to college. Some people just go do their own thing, yeah. go somewhere else. Um, I tried it for a while, but I was, was there's that kind of drawback, um, came back and it's just always, even between different jobs and whatnot, I've just always made it work. It's just, there's always been a draw for me to get back into Hawk Point. And it's cool to look at it now because I can see the different changes. Like yeah. we have had businesses come and go, but you know, the back roads, pizza and grill that's out there. I worked there when I was 16 and it's still there. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that's like, wow. You know, I have to sit there. I'm like, that place has been there for almost 20 years now. Wow. That's Which cool. Is all these different aspects, and then it, you know it gives you that prideful like you know that's my community, yeah. and we got new things coming in, and then it comes back on when we're in when we look at it. Then as the fire department, we go and we patronize those businesses too. So like we got a new ice cream shop. We're waiting for them to open up on Monday nights. Awesome. They're, they're open on weekends because we'll take the truck up there and see it. Um, and then we use all these other businesses in Lincoln County, like our shirts are yep. made by Lisa and. Yep. Uh, um, country state of mind. Yep. All she of makes our, a lot of our stuff. All of our trucks are worked on by Aaron Lee out of advanced machine. Like we keep everything so local. Yeah. I could probably go somewhere else. It might be a little bit cheaper. It's not local, but it's not local. It, yeah. It's something about the community where someone's like, man, you guys, shirts look really good. Where do you get them done? Oh, get them done right in Troy. Yep. Um, hey, you got any idea on where I can get something fixed? Oh yeah. I got this or this. We very rarely try to get out. So we, you know, we try to keep everything as close as we can yep. Because it just shows, in my opinion, good faith on the fact that, like, hey, we, we're, well, it's, we're here. One of the ways I've built up Boyer Painting is I've got a lot of local guys that work for me. They're always local. They're home by four. Our shop's in, in um, off Gravens, but they're home by four. And 99, oh, I would say, if we're not on a large contractor site, which we've been on one for a year now in O'Fallon, almost all our work's local. Yeah. And I'll bid stuff. We're getting ready to go up and do uh, paint the Garth Mansion up in Hannibal. Hmm. I'll go that way further than I'll go into St. Charles County because of traffic and I don't have to worry about my vans getting stolen. Yeah. Um, if, if we don't cross the river anymore, people call for something in St. Louis. I'm like, yeah, I'm not your guy. But we're always local. But what they really like, what, and this, this guy caught on to this when we started kind of getting some traction, was... Um, going places in the work shirt and people recognizing them. You know, uh, yeah. um, uh, I got tagged in a thing the one night Derek and Amber, Big Stickies, put up a thing. One of my guys was up there eating, and Rich was thrilled. He was like, love the food. You know, he started commenting on it. But they they like that. I've had uh, people work for me at the school that would uh, have a paint, painting or an academy hoodie in their car. So I'd be like, oh, oh, I, and they know it or they know the business. And that attracted people to work for us because they liked that, that, that feel and that respect of working for something local. They enjoyed oh, yeah. that. And that, that was something that I had to think about when I got into business. That wasn't something I planned to like use to bring in new employees was, hey, we're a local family business that does a lot. Of, I mean, we do a lot around town painting wise. Um, more than every once in a while, I'll put up a post of like all the different businesses and stuff. Well, I'm getting ready to, um, I think we sent them a bid, but I was, I think we were playing around with what product to use, but I was going to go paint a uh, door in Winfield. Mm. You know, paint one of the doors red. They got a section of the door. It's beige or something, or maybe, maybe we're going to paint them all red. I don't remember what it was. I remember Casey will bounce questions off me as I come in out of the office sometimes, but the guys love that stuff. They love it when they get to work places like that to where people know them because we're a local business. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's crazy too. Like the power, like you said, like a t-shirt, the power of a t-shirt. Yeah. Like I've got guys, like I got to remind some of my guys, they're like, Hey, we bought you a new t-shirt. Yeah. They're like, well, I was like, I get it. Wear the old one if we have a, you know, yeah. we're going on a brush call. Like, put on your new fresh T-shirt. I have to when, remind when my painters When you're that. going around, it's just crazy. Like, because I'll see them. I was like, you wear your Hawk Point shirt everywhere you go? Well, yeah, I just like wearing it. I'm like, yeah. hey, I'm fine with it. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. And then in turn, you see them wear like other, you know, they'll get a T-shirt, whatnot, 
this, that, a business here, there. And it's just always amazed me. Like the, the power, power of a, a branded t-shirt in Lincoln yeah. County is gold. Oh, yeah. See, when I, was I in- get hounded by the high school kids, they'll hit up my instructors at the dojo be like, Hey, you get me one of them painting hoodies. <laughs> they want the painting hoodies. It blows yeah. me away. They're going to have, they're going to, they're going to be all over me this year. Cause we did bright pink ones and mm-hmm. the pink t-shirts, Pike Lincoln County, uh, Pike Lincoln tech cleaned me out on pink t-shirts before. And we went back to pink this year. It's something oh, around man. here. Brajiola was the t-shirt to have yep. when I was in high school. I see people that, yep. Was, we, <laughs> we get like, it blows me away. So, so at the fair, we do bracelets, rubber bracelets, Warrior yeah. Academy bracelets. And I'd have people come by, you got a blue one, you got a red one. These teens kept coming by, like teenagers. I, they, I was like, hey, well, they kept asking for stuff. Well, I had someone tell me, they're like, oh, yeah, it's like a college drinking game. Whoever doesn't get the most bracelets has to drink. So a bunch of them come by. I was like, hey, come here. Stop. We're going to talk. I was like, what are you guys doing with these? They're like, we collect them. I'm like, hey, hey, hey don't give me that BS. Like, are you guys doing a drinking game? They're like, no, really. Like, look, I got one of the yellow ones from three years ago. Oh. I was like, no <laughs> shit, really? Yeah, and I was wow. like, so then I dug through because I had a couple of them come by one night. They're like, hey, uh, can, can we dig? Do you got that bucket still? I was like, yeah, they're like, can we dig dig through? I, I need a blue one. I think you had orange too because we did orange around Halloween. Mm-hmm. They were collecting them. They were legit. They had them up their <laughs> arms. I had no clue. And some of my instructors were like, yeah, we pocket them when mm-hmm. you get the new ones. That way we've got a full collection. I'm like, you're... You're kidding me, right? Like you guys collect the the 99 cent rubber bracelets. Like you guys, like, this is like a thing. They're like, oh yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's do some new colors. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Never would have thought in a million years. And then the t-shirts, they come by the booth. A friend of mine messaged me the other day from Bowling Green. Girl working a factory up there had one of the t-shirts on. He's like, she used to work for you? I'm like, nope, but I give shirts out. They're like, they're, they're I mean, it's like, waffles in jail or whatever. I think my nephew yeah. told me waffles were a big trading item in jail. But yeah, the t-shirts and everybody comes, they love t-shirts. Love a t-shirt. Yeah, I've tried crazy. so many times to like get t-shirts cheap enough that I could just throw them at the parade and just throw out to you because they wear them. We oh, gave yeah. out hoodies one year. Last year, we gave out about $10,000 of old apparel. Stuff I just couldn't sell anymore. I'm OCD. I can't stand it sitting around. That year at... Um, Night of a Thousand Stars, all sorts of Black Warrior Academy hoodies yes. walking around that did not go to the school. I was sitting at the booth. I'm like, also that. it was freezing. It was oh, yeah, freezing, but they were rocking the hoodies. I was like, wow. I was like, wow. If I wanted to take over, I just need to print about 500 Boyer painting hoodies, oh, and I'd, yeah. I'd rule. But it's wild at how that works. And there's a lot of communities like I, I've got friends in places where like, yeah, no one would take a t-shirt. I'm like, yeah, you're in Wildwood. Like that wouldn't happen. Yeah. yeah. But out here, people love it. Um, the uh, the shirts where you do the the different businesses are on the back, but then you get to put your logo on the front. Shoot, anytime they come through, I'm going to buy a big order because those things were a hot commodity. I oh, bought them yeah, in different yeah. neon colors. We couldn't, I, I mean, they cleaned me out of them. I people stop and by the school, hey, it's getting those pants. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, it's, it's wild. It's nuts how that stuff works. I mean, my guys are the same way, like on the department. You give them a fresh t shirt, it's like, oh, okay. It's like, yeah. God, well, hey, if this can boost morale, even if it's just for the day, <laughs> just for the day, you know, I'll take it. Like, uh-huh. they were, I was joking with them last night because they're on me about hats. They want hats. It's like, okay, I'll get us some fire department hats that give me a little bit, yeah. make sure everything works, you know, works out and everything. And, you know, I'm like, I look at it now at the level I'm at, I was like, you know, if that's something that can boost morale, <laughs> Go for I'm it. about it. Because, you know, that's an easy justification. Hey, these yeah. guys are doing this for free. Yeah, I give can, them a hat. I give them a t-shirt. Spend, 600 bucks on some hats and yep. t-shirts they get one they're gonna wear it at all of our pr events any of the stuff we go out and do and in turn that it, it's a little bit of pride they feel good about it that's exactly. that's what i do with my guys too if they need a new hat uh, we've got some new ones being made right now to go with the new pink shirts still? and um huh still yeah we got black ones coming with pink pink oh. on them um if I can give a hat out, I, that's I always tell everybody. I wish I could buy hundreds of shirts to just give them to everyone that I bump into because they love them and it's great support. It's it's just anytime stuff sits on the clearance table for a little while that I can't get rid of at the school, I'll even give out the uniform tops at the fair because kids will wear them as t-shirts. 
Yeah. I take everything up there in totes, give it out. I'd rather do that with it because people wear it. I see them everywhere. The only thing that kind of backfired is I bought little spank shorts and tops for our, our competitors to wear under their uniforms because they have to change and the girls don't always have somewhere to go do it. So I bought some branded ones so it would at least look a little better. Yeah, one of the teens come up for Taekwondo Jeez. and his girlfriend was only wearing that when they walked in. I was like, oh, I don't want to be the dress code of yeah. girls whose parents <laughs> aren't watching them. Yeah. I remember sitting there, Stacy at the front desk was giggling at me because of my face i was just like oh yeah, that's i was cool. like that's it's supposed to be under stuff oh <laughs> i didn't think that went through i was like we gave out a lot of those at the fair i was uh -huh. like this could really backfire but only the one has shown up so oh, far i was like we this might get ugly so well man i appreciate you coming on yeah, sure. uh, we're about out of time here as how if people want to volunteer or get involved or do anything how can they find you guys to do that yeah so a couple different outlets so we do we are on facebook we have yes. point fire protection district on facebook there's a couple of them out there. If one of them spammed, that don't go to that one. Go to the other one. I'm working with trying to get something off Facebook's crazy. Yeah. So trying to get the old one. Um, we have a website. I'm getting ready to dive into that thing. It's a little dated, but we do have a website, um, hawkpointfire.org. You can go to that. Um, it's got, you know, if you want to volunteer, it'll at least get um, the contact to me or whatnot. Nice. Um, and then, I mean, it's even the fact of just sending me an email. Our email is super simple. It's just 65 hundred so six five zero zero at gmail.com so nice. if someone's in our area and you know watches the podcast it's like man i'd be willing to you know volunteer we're always looking for volunteers um we've got that's one thing i didn't even mention we have two stations so we've got oh. our hawk point station that's our station one our station two's out in truxton because truxton's also an area we serve oh wow because we go from hawk point all the way up to the montgomery county line wow over west so We've got a pretty large area out there too. So our Truxton, we got a Truxton station right there on Highway A. We've got five guys at it right now. So yeah, if anybody, they can any of that stuff, Facebook, Hawk Point Fire, fire um, then hawkpointfire.org, and that'll have all of our contact information. And Awesome. Give us a message. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. I like these. It's been the best thing with the podcast. Like we said, you know, you got business owners, you got, you know, everybody under the sun around town. And I can't wait till we get to the point where, you know, because we've had a few things reach out in the beginning, like the uh, robotics team won something. Like, I can't wait till we get to a point where we can just bring on different random groups to not just business owners and, and people like bring in like a historian around Troy, like really bring yeah. some stuff. I'm just, I just find it interesting. So yeah. thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for tuning in, checking it out today. You know, tuning in's a word anymore with the internet. I don't know if you tune in, but uh, we appreciate it. I said something the other day about rewinding. I'm like, I don't think rewinding's a thing either. <laughs> yeah. So appreciate you guys checking out. Like it, support our sponsors, and we'll catch you guys next time.